right? Hello, boys and girls. Boys and girls, gather in quickly. Something to tell you, but I'm not supposed to. So listen really, really carefully. Sunday school finishes next Sunday. You probably knew that bit. But what you didn't know is there's going to be something over the summer for you. Don't panic. It's not big, big, long Sunday school lessons. We are going to have the Bethel Hall Summer Quest. First week's a wee bit longer and the last week a wee bit longer but most of the videos are only 5 to 10 minutes long and here's what's going to happen. Four things every week. First thing will be we're going to read a book together. Mm. I can see all the faces of the people that don't like reading books. Well, it's not a book like that. It's an iBook and there's animations and cartoon and video and everything in it. It is excellent. I'm not going to tell you what the story is. Tune in on the 6th of June and you'll find out what this special iBook is. The next thing we're going to have is an A to Z guide. Now in the old days, you no know, really old days, when, when Johnny and his father were driving about in the car, they'd have had an A to Z guide. All the street names from A through to Z in every town and every city. And we're going to have that, but there'll be Bible verses. So we're going to have one for each letter of the alphabet and we're going to learn those over the 10 weeks of Summer Quest. Next thing you're going to have is a song and the song will help to remind you about things that we've maybe heard in the story that week. And the very last thing for you all to remember is there's eight clues hidden and you have to watch really really carefully because they're only on screen for a few seconds and if you gather the eight clues then when Sunday school starts back after the summer bring all the clues together and there's prizes to be won brilliant so we're going to have that now go and tell all your friends tell them to tune in from the 6th of June but shh, don't let on to Johnny I've let the cat out of the bag about what's going to happen okay see you all soon bye hello everybody how are you hope you're well for this week's Sunday School, these will maybe help with the story later on and we'll see if you can work out what the story is before that. But great to be back. Only next week left of official Sunday Schools and then it'll be a summer series that we're bringing out and we're looking forward to putting it online for you. It'll be a wee quest, it'll be a bit of a quiz and at the end then it'll all being well lead back into the resumption or the starting again of Sunday School in September. All being well, God willing. But great to see you back. We're looking forward to it. But this week it's me. So without any further hassle, we'll just say a prayer. And then there'll be a wee tiny verse coming up, all being well. And then a song, Everywhere Around Me. We played it last week. We'll play it this week. And then next week as well. And then we'll be straight into the story. So after three. One, two, three. Our loving Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for all the blessings you've given us. We give you thanks for the boys and girls and their families that will be watching, Lord. We thank you that they've stayed with us for the entire duration of lockdown, Lord. It hasn't been easy on them, and it certainly hasn't been easy on their folks, Lord. And we pray for them and continue to pray for their health and well-being and safety. For all those who are watching, Lord, we give you thanks, and we pray for them in their individual circumstances, that you'll bless them, and that this will be a blessing to them. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks for all these. Amen. Right, so, see you soon. wrestling and in my doubts in my failures you won't walk out your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea whoa you are the peace in my troubled sea in the silence you won't let go Questions your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you.
Well, good afternoon. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. And what is the, you would call it the penultimate. Next week's the last, so this is the one before the last Sunday School. Great to see you. Thank you so much. Um, this week we've been looking at, at, well, I suppose we should say the last few weeks, we've looked at a few of the miracles of the Lord Jesus. We've looked at when he was able to heal people, both physically and maybe in their mind as well. Um, and we've looked at other circumstances where he's performed miracles. It's been really excellent to understand that. Well, this week we're going to look at another miracle of Jesus. And maybe the flippers will hopefully have been a clue to you that it's something to do with water. Now, there's some miracles that Jesus has done that, well, he turned water into really good drink, really good wine at a wedding. We know that much. In fact, we've covered that in Sunday School this year. Um, but there are other miracles involving water where, oh, if you remember, he calmed the sea. That's another great one. Well, this one, it's found in three of the four New Testament Gospels. It's found in Mark chapter 6, Matthew chapter 14, and John chapter 6. So if something's once in the Bible, it's pretty important. But if it's three times, well then, it is really, really interesting and really important and something that we can learn from. Now, Donoghadee as a town, you know fine rightly, has a big heritage in the water. And if you look up here on the Bethel Hall online, we have the lighthouse there, the harbour. We know what it's like to be at the seaside. And the people in this story definitely knew what it was like to be at the seaside. Nothing really would surprise them a great deal about the sea because they're years there. They're very experienced. But I'm going to read it and there'll be pictures as well to illustrate it. Thank you for those from the Children's Bible. It's described as number 300, 283, sorry, walking on water. When the enormous picnic was over, and we'll have a little look at that as well um, next week. When the enormous picnic was over, Jesus sent the disciples ahead of him back across the lake. Some of the crowd still clustered around Jesus, cheering and shouting. They wanted to make him king there, then and there. It would be a fine thing to have a king who could provide them with free meals. Well, who wouldn't like that? That'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Kindly but firmly, Jesus refused and sent them off home. Then, as night fell, he climbed the hill overlooking the lake to be alone with God as Father. Meanwhile, the disciples were struggling desperately against a strong wind. Of course, in those days, it was sailing ships and sailing boats and oars as well to row them. And hopefully you've seen the, the picture of the folks down the harbour who swim across the harbour. Have you seen that? Whoa, what a distance. It's incredible. You'll maybe see it later. I haven't quite decided where to put it in the story yet. So, well, if you've seen it, great. But you'll see it in a minute. Meanwhile, the disciples were struggling desperately against the strong wind. However hard they rowed, they made no headway. They weren't making any progress. From the top of the hill, Jesus could see the little boat and picture his exhausted disciples. It's not just like a picture of what God sees us going through now. People are exhausted and they're fed up. If you're a teacher in secondary school, you're doing center determined grades. You're trying to get the right exam grades for the pupils that you've taught for maybe five or up to seven years. <sighs> exhausted doing that. It's a hard task. If you're in primary school, well, last year's transfer was cancelled and what's going to happen to this year's and there are all sorts of things and all sorts of queries that are in our minds for this year. People are fed up, fed up wearing masks, fed up being restricted, exhausted with all the things that you have to remember to do, to sanitise your hands. Do. do you know what? God sees that and he understands it. He knows what it's like to be exhausted. He would go to them, it says, but when the disciples saw a mysterious shadowy figure Coming towards them across the lake in the moonlight, they were terrified. So there out in the lake, there's a shadowy figure coming towards them. And they're terrified. It's a ghost, they cried. Their tired nerves could stand no more. Then a familiar voice rang out. Don't be frightened. I am coming to help you. They could not believe it. Imagine rubbing their eyes, trying to see for the spray that was getting in the way. 
rowing furiously to keep the bow of the boat into the waves. Otherwise, it would possibly rock and rock and there would be water getting in and it would maybe sink. Oh, what a tiring task the disciples had. What a tiring time we sometimes have. And yet we have the assurance from Scripture that Jesus says he's coming back. He's coming back. Don't be frightened if you're a Christian out there. I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to help you. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. It helps us because it lives in us. They could not believe it, I'll say again. If it's really you, Peter called back, tell me to come to you. Oh, Peter's a great character, isn't he? He's the one that sort of says it as it is. You might say there's no back doors in him. If he, if he says it, he means it straight away. No messing. He's not going to muck about. He says it. Tell me to come to you. All right, Peter, Jesus answered. Come on. What would you do in those circumstances? Well, Peter, he said, class, I'm going to go. Even though it defies or it, it goes against all logic. Peter climbed over the side of the boat and began to walk towards Jesus on top of the water. The swimmers that are down the front, I reckon it would be a whole lot more straightforward if you were to go from the slipway at the yacht club right across to the harbour steps and then back again, as they do almost every day with the, the chunky dunkers as they're called. If you could walk that distance, well, it would be more straightforward, wouldn't it? Because we can walk from the slipway right round to the harbour past where all the filming's going on at the minute and so on, um, and Pier 36 and all of it. We can walk there, it's dead easy. Swimming's a bit of a different proposition. Now that's tricky. And you see from the, the clip, there are a couple of swimmers out there. My goodness, what a task. What a brave thing to do. Any wonder they have a float with them. In other words, they have something to, to rescue them, to keep them afloat if it goes wrong. Peter then began to walk towards Jesus on top of the water. Suddenly he felt a strong gust of wind catch him and he looked down at the swirling waves. In other words, he maybe stumbled, he maybe wobbled. Don't we all stumble and wobble? Don't we all get it wrong at times? Don't we all look at the wrong thing rather than the right thing, which is to fix our eyes on Jesus? In that moment of panic, he began to sink again. Don't we all do that? Don't we all look at the wrong place and begin to sink below the troubles and the cares and the trials of this world and this life that we have? Yeah, of course we do. I'm no different, and I know you're no different either, because we're human. Help! Save me, Lord! He shouted. What a thing to say and what a thing to ask. Do you know if I were going across the harbour and I were stuck in the middle and I couldn't go on any further, well, I've got, an, you have to have an inflatable, I'm going to call it a bag. I'm really sorry if you watch this and you're a, a, a swimmer in the harbour. It looks like an inflatable bag. Apologies if that's not what it's called. But if you maybe get a cramp in your foot or your leg, so many people drown every year because they get a cramp. But if you've got that inflatable bag, sorry, with you, it helps you to float. It's something that you can cling on to, to rescue you in the event of it going wrong. In the event of our lives going wrong, as they often do, we need to do what Peter did and shout, help, save me, Lord. Oh, of course, we want you to become a Christian and get saved, because that's the whole point of it. That's why we have Sunday school week in, week out, that we would pray that prayer, save me, Lord, save me. Jesus. So help, save me, Lord, Peter shouted. Jesus put out his hand quickly, caught Peter by the wrist and pulled him up from the foaming water. Well, Peter could have gone under. I'm not sure if he could swim, but he could have gone under and especially in a rough sea. You know, there's some really rough days down at the harbour and quite sensibly, you don't see the swimmers going across the harbour then. My goodness, that would be too risky, wouldn't it? You could absolutely, well, as Granny would have said, you could drunt, you would get drowned. 
the waves would overtake you, overcome you. And you'd be left fighting to try and float. And, oh my goodness. Peter was in that circumstance. And he said, Lord, save me or save me, Lord. Jesus says, why did you doubt me, Peter? He asked. Why do we doubt God in the circumstances that we have? Hasn't he said he'll bring us through? Hasn't he said he'd take us to heaven if we've asked him into our heart? Hasn't he said that? And this life is full of troubles and trials and things that go wrong and disappointments and well, muck-ups that we make. But we need to say, save me, Lord, help me. And Jesus is right there to help us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Then the two of them climbed into the boat. Immediately, the wind died down. The disciples were amazed. Some of them were rough and ready fishermen. Not that all fishermen are rough and ready, but you know what I mean. They were amazed at the power that Jesus had. And it says that uh, in one particular part, even the wind and the waves obey him. They could not understand how their master was able to do the impossible. Well, you and I have a fair idea how he's able to do the impossible. It's because he's God's son, because he's Jesus. And in trusting him and asking him into your hearts, just like Peter shouted, such a simple thing, Lord, save me. Save me, Lord, help. He'll come into our lives. Doesn't make our life any more straightforward than it would otherwise have been. But we know that we have someone to help us and to pull us up by the wrist when things do go wrong and someone that we can trust in and look to for help. I love the story of when Jesus walks on water. It gives me so much encouragement to try and walk through everyday life, as I'm sure it will you. Let's have a couple of questions. Okay. So, from the story, what were the disciples traveling in to get to the other side of the lake? What were they traveling in? Now, there's a technician just to my right here who thinks he knows the answer. A boat. He's given the correct answer, just as you did. Well done. He said, a boat. So, I don't think he... Nah, he's not getting any sweeties. You can have a Percy pig. Look at that. Ginormous Percy pig. Fantastic. Great job. Okay. So, there's a Percy pig for you. Well done. Second question. Who was the disciple who stepped out of the boat with huge faith and said, yes, this is for me, and then looked around him and started to sink? What was his name? His name was... His name was Peter. Very well done. These are uh, these are from Thornton's. Other varieties are available. Thornton's, and they're very particularly nice um, chocolate sweeties. So you'll enjoy a wee non-existent one of those. Great job. And then, oh, will we do a third question? Yes, I think we will. And this one. What did Jesus say to Peter whenever he reached down and grabbed him by the wrist? What did he say? He said, Peter, why did you doubt me? Exactly. Very well done. These ones are Starburst Minis, this one. So I'll give you three of those. Right, so having had an enormous number of sweeties so far, well done on that. Thank you for joining us this week. We'll close in a little bit of prayer. And then next week, we'll have a little bit more information about what's happening through the summer. And we'll look forward to those. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the many lessons that we can learn from the miracles of Jesus and how in these circumstances the Lord Jesus was able to rescue and save Peter. Help us to learn a lesson, Lord, that we need to speak to you and to cry to you when we're in trouble, Lord, but also, more importantly than that, Lord, that we need to ask for salvation. Bless the boys and girls this week as they go to school. Bless the teachers as they uh, educate them. Bless the parents as they look after them at home, Father. We give you thanks for all you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Right, thank you. We'll see who's coming up next week and you'll look forward to that, the final week of Sunday school. God bless.